Have you ever wondered what is the true essence of divine love? Let's embark on a journey to understand this profound concept. Divine love is often perceived as the epitome of pure unconditional affection. It's a love that doesn't keep score, that doesn't waver in the face of trials, and that doesn't seek anything in return. It's a love that is devoid of self-interest, and instead, it is fundamentally altruistic. Imagine a love that doesn't discriminate, that doesn't judge, and that doesn't hold grudges. This is divine love. It's a love that embraces every creature, every human, every entity in the universe, equally and without judgment. It's not concerned with who's right or who's wrong, who's good or who's bad. It's a love that sees beyond the superficial layers of our existence and connects directly with the essence of our being. Divine love is not about possession or attachment, it's not about me and you, but rather about us. It's a love that transcends the boundaries of our individual selves and merges into a collective consciousness, a universal bond that unites us all. This is the kind of love that heals, that nurtures and that uplifts. It's the kind of love that brings peace, harmony and unity. It's the kind of love that inspires us to be better, to do better and to love better. But remember, divine love is not merely a concept or an idea. It's a way of life, a way of being. It's about embodying these qualities in our thoughts, words and actions. It's about living from a place of love, compassion and kindness every moment of every day. Divine love is not something that we can acquire or achieve. It's something that we uncover within ourselves. It's a journey of self-discovery, self-awareness and self-transcendence. Now that we've unraveled the concept of divine love, how can we apply it in our daily lives? To love like God loves, we must first understand how it manifests in our world. Imagine a woman named Jane, who despite her demanding job, spends her weekends volunteering at a local homeless shelter. She doesn't do it for recognition or praise, but simply because she believes everyone deserves compassion and a helping hand. Jane's actions are a manifestation of divine love, as she's giving selflessly to others in need, or consider a man named John, who, after being wronged terribly by a former friend, chooses to forgive rather than hold on to resentment. It's a difficult choice, one that requires immense strength and grace. Yet, by forgiving, John is embodying divine love, showing mercy and kindness where others might choose anger or revenge. Let's take another example of a couple, Mary and Joe, who have adopted multiple children from difficult circumstances providing them with a loving home and bright future. They didn't do it out of obligation but out of pure, unconditional love for these children. This, again, is an example of divine love in action. Now think of a teenager, Emily, who stands up against bullying in her school, even at the risk of becoming an outcast herself. She does it not for popularity, but for the sake of justice and love for her peers. Emily's courage and empathy are another manifestation of divine love. These are just a few examples among countless others. People from all walks of life in different parts of the world are exhibiting divine love in their own unique ways every day. They serve, forgive, adopt, stand up for justice and do many other acts of kindness, not for personal gain, but out of love for their fellow human beings. These examples show us that divine love is not just a concept, but a way of life. Embracing divine love is a journey, not a destination. So, where do we start? The path to divine love begins with the choice to love unconditionally. Just as the sun shines equally on all, regardless of who they are or what they've done, divine love asks us to extend our hearts to everyone. This is easier said than done, of course. But, it's a step that we must take, embracing every opportunity to express love, without any expectations or conditions. Next, we venture into the realm of forgiveness. It's often in our nature to hold on to hurt, to let resentment fester. But divine love urges us to let go. To forgive is to release ourselves from the burden of bitterness. It's to acknowledge that we are all human, susceptible to mistakes. Remember forgiveness isn't about excusing wrong actions, but about freeing our hearts from the chains of resentment. Now let's talk about empathy. To love like the divine we must strive to understand and share the feelings of others. It's about putting ourselves in someone else's shoes, feeling their joy, their pain, their fears. Developing empathy helps us to connect more deeply with others, fostering compassion, understanding and ultimately divine love. Let's not forget that divine love involves self-love too. We cannot pour from an empty cup. We must nourish our own souls, care for our own hearts, before we can extend that love to others. So, be kind to yourself, cherish the person you are and remember that you too are deserving of love. And finally, cultivate patience. 
Divine love isn't something that blossoms overnight. It takes time, it requires effort. There will be moments of frustration, moments where it seems easier to revert back to our old ways. But remember, every step taken, no matter how small, is progress. Remember, divine love is a process, not an overnight transformation. So, take one step at a time and gradually you'll find yourself walking the path of divine love. What happens to us when we start to love like God loves? This is a question that invites us down a path of profound transformation. When we begin to embrace divine love, we experience a shift in our hearts and minds. We start to see the world, not as a place of conflict and division but as a community bound by the shared human experience. Divine love cultivates a sense of peace within us, a tranquility that goes beyond understanding. It's like a calm lake, untouched by the storms of life. But divine love doesn't just change us on an individual level, it also affects our relationships. It bridges gaps, mends broken bonds, and fosters unity. It reminds us that we are all interconnected, that we are all one. In the presence of divine love, ego, pride and prejudice lose their power. They are replaced by humility, acceptance and understanding. And there's more. Divine love has the power to heal. It reaches into the deepest, darkest corners of our souls and brings light. It soothes our wounds, eases our burdens, and gives us the strength to overcome our trials. It whispers to us, you are not alone, you are loved, you matter. Moreover, divine love has a transformative effect. It's like a master potter, shaping and molding us into the best versions of ourselves. It calls forth our inner beauty, our innate goodness, our inherent worth. It encourages us to grow, to evolve, to become. Imagine for a moment a world imbued with divine love. A world where people are kinder, more compassionate, more understanding. A world where conflicts are resolved, not through violence but through dialogue and empathy. A world where everyone feels seen, heard, valued. Doesn't that sound like a world worth striving for? Divine love not only changes us but also the world around us. So let's cultivate this love in our hearts. Let's share it with others. Let's be the change we wish to see in the world. Because divine love is not just a concept, it's a way of life. Let's recap what we've discovered about divine love. We embarked on a journey to explore this profound concept, a love that transcends the human understanding of affection, and we found that it is an all-encompassing, unconditional kind of love. A love that is not limited by our human frailties or prejudices, but rather, it is boundless, all-forgiving, and all-embracing. We delved into examples of divine love in action, illustrating its transformative power. We saw how it transcends the mundane, turning ordinary moments into extraordinary ones. It's the love that inspires a mother to sacrifice for her child, a stranger to help another in need, and even a foe to forgive his adversary. It's a love that goes beyond the surface, reaching into the very core of our beings. Then we walk the path to cultivating this divine love. It's not a path laden with rose petals, but rather, it's a journey of the heart, of self-sacrifice, of humility, and of absolute surrender. It's about transcending our human limitations and reaching out to the divine within us. It's about breaking down the walls of ego and letting the light of love shine through. We also explored the impact of divine love, its ripple effects in our lives and in the world around us. This love has the power to heal, to transform, and to inspire. It's a love that brings peace in the midst of chaos, hope in times of despair, and joy in moments of sorrow. It's a love that bridges divides, unites hearts, and brings about a harmony that resonates with the rhythm of the universe. In the end, to love like God loves is to love without conditions, to forgive without limits, and to serve without expecting anything in return. It's a journey worth embarking on.